Hi, I'm Matt Kelly for the Next Gear Green here in Los Angeles. I'm joined today with Ford's Praveen Charian. Praveen is program manager for the Ford Transit Connect electric vehicle. Praveen, it's a pleasure having you on the show today. The last time you and I chatted was over the uh, Ford Fusion hybrid vehicle. I'm really excited to learn more about the vehicle here today. I understand it's a collaboration with Azure Dynamics. Absolutely, Matt. This is uh, the f f first of four electric vehicles Ford's launching. Uh, followed by this vehicle, we have the Ford Focus coming out next year, and then we have two new hybrids in 2012 and also a plug-in hybrid. So we're very excited about introducing this product, and we're out here in LA uh, showing this to our media as well as to potential customers. Mm -hmm. What we're doing here is leveraging our global assets. In this case, the Transit Connect is a global platform. Mm -hmm. We're bringing this platform from Europe, and it's built in Turkey. And we've worked with our upfitter Azure Dynamics, as you can see here, uh, in packaging the hi electric hardware in the vehicle. Great. And what we did is in designing this platform, we made sure that you didn't compromise any of the base core strengths of this vehicle. Mm. Basically payload, cargo volume, uh, the ride height, all those capabilities have been maintained with the offering of the electric powertrain. Wonderful. Let's walk around the vehicle here, Praveen, and as you introduce us to it, the thing that strikes me immediately, of course, is the stance of the vehicle. It's based on a European platform. This is not a North American vehicle. It's, it's actually our global platform, mm -hmm. and what we found is that there are, with, the, with the gas prices actually going up, we found that people that traditionally bought pickup trucks mm -hmm. uh, didn't quite need that pickup truck. They wanted a fuel-efficient gasoline vehicle that had the cargo capacity of a pickup truck. And what this vehicle was was actually doing for Europe was a perfect uh, suitor for this market, and that's why we brought this uh, platform to the U.S. Mm -hmm. And it's been a phenomenal success with our customers. Wonderful. The vehicle is running on a very heavy-duty electric battery, I understand, that's actually liquid-cooled. Isn't that correct? Yeah, what we did is we packaged the battery right underneath the floor between the rails of this vehicle. And, and you're it, not compromising vehicle clearance at all not, by doing it, that. And the way this package was, which is what I love about this package, mm -hmm. was it didn't compromise the load floor, so no impact to cargo volume, and we are able to package without violating any of our ground clearance lines on this vehicle. In this business, there are many upfitters out there that actually will create cargo management systems for you. And this is one example of a cargo management system in the vehicle. Uh, what you're seeing here is a fully loaded Transit Connect uh, with all the uh, capabilities of what you would need as a, say, a small business owner in terms of all the tools that you want to carry and everything you need for your job site. Well, Praveen, we had a very special guest uh, joining us here today, taking a special test drive of your Transit Connect electric vehicle, Chelsea Sexton, who appeared in the documentary, Who Killed the Electric Car? So if you let's go for a test drive, okay. and come back and ask questions. It's ready to go. And it tells you on the far left that you have about 65 approximate miles before you run out of charge. Is there a power use gauge? No, we don't okay. have a power use gauge. And, and the reason we kept the interface fairly simple, largely because of the intended users. Now, in our future applications, that, like you saw on Smart Gauge on the Fusion, right. you're going to see a lot more inter interfaces like that in the future applications. But this is more specifically designed for utilities and fleet customers. Okay. Well, Chelsea, I'm so excited to have you on the show here today. You took a test drive of Ford's Transit Connect electric battery vehicle. I wanted to get your thoughts and uh, uh, your opinion of the vehicle. You know what? Yeah, we spun it around a little bit. I couldn't light it up the way that I, <laughs> I usually try to. No burning rubber. Uh, but no, it's it's a great, very substantive, um, very capable vehicle. You know, it's a quirky design, especially mm. for the U.S. market, which I think actually is part of the appeal. Mm. Have, I've had a surprising number of people, both fleet and retail, say I love one of those. You know, okay. Even as my family car, I'll just put a bunch of seats in the back and use it as a minivan. I'm really curious to see what that does to range. Mm. Um, our past experience is about every hundred miles. Uh, hun our past experience is about every extra hundred pounds you put in the vehicle, you shave a mile off the range. Okay. So. You know, depending on the application in terms of the business, I'm not sure how much you're going to be able to load this up with tools and still get the 80 miles, but it's only a matter of time until we find out. 
and this is a good place to start. Yeah, and that kind of leads me to my next question is how important do you think it is for the vehicle in this segment to become electrified, a light duty vehicle? Uh, we're seeing it in passenger vehicles. What do you think about this uh, uh, vehicle segment uh, coming into the electrification? You know, this is actually a prime segment to electrify, either pure electric or even as a plug-in hybrid, kind of like what Bright is doing, mm -hmm. because a lot of the fleet vehicles drive the same number of miles every single day in the same route. So things like postal vehicles, you know, Southern California Edison has been using RAV4 EVs, which mm -hmm. have a similar range, to do their meter reading for years. Mm -hmm. They've logged something like 18 million electric miles on these things. So this class of vehicles is actually uniquely suited to being electrified without some of the range anxiety and other concerns that we're plagued with for the retail market. There is no, how do I drive this vehicle in Vegas? Because no one's going to do it. What do you think of Ford by entering into this vehicle segment uh, and electrifying it? Because as I understand, there really isn't an electric vehicle in this segment yet. What do you think of uh, their plan to, to enter this segment and uh, across their vehicle spectrum? I think it's about damn time. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've been waiting for Ford to kind of come out of the closet, as it were, mm -hmm. for several years on any electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. you know? We've known that guys like Edison have had the plug-in hybrid escapes for a while and, and I'm very excited about that and yet been sort of waiting for that to lead to something else. So the fact that they're finally not only going electric but with a number of different vehicles and platforms and for fleet and for retail and all of those sorts of things is really encouraging. Mm. That we're starting to see it mm -hmm. is even better. But what do you think their challenges are going to be with this vehicle? I think the challenges will end up being real world range, mm -hmm. um, price, yeah. I mean that's a question for everybody, it's the one thing everyone wants to know, it's the one thing no one's announced. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it's going to be a matter of, of customer experience, you know, as much as you know, the engineering is a challenge for all of these companies, it's not the car that's been the historical problem. Mm -hmm. you know, they know how to build really good plug-in cars when they want to. <laughs> We've shown how much people love the plug-in cars that have been built in the past, it's everything that surrounds that. It's the sales and the service and the infrastructure mm -hmm. and all of those sorts of things that sort of happen after you take the car home. Wonderful. And if you can wrap your hands around that, then you can have an absolute hit on your hands. And luckily, a fleet approach sort of minimizes some of that by narrowing down the number of different people involved. You're not trying to serve a million customers off the bat. You're serving a finite number of fleets that have multiple vehicles. Some of them can do self-servicing, all sorts of different things that make the application a little bit easier. Even, even things like public infrastructure become less of a challenge mm. because you're charging at the fleet location and some will use you know public charging in various places and that's all great but they're not nearly as dependent on them as the retail folks are this is why we love having chelsea sexton <laughs> on our show today she's just on. a veritable wealth of information and it's a pleasure having you on the show today to Absolutely. get a real world test drive from an electric vehicle expert and enthusiast and we look forward to hearing more uh, on your ventures as we bring about the electrification of the automobile on behalf of ford i'm matt kelly in los angeles my thanks to praveen cherry and and to Brandy Shaffles from AskPatty.com. I'm Matt Kelly for the next Gear Green.